wedding. I'd go out to a restaurant and I'd bring my perfect guy with me. And Greg or whoever I was dating at the time was sitting there. And um, loves children, check. Ooh, he might be a keeper. Um, loves music, loves to sing. He just burped. He just burped at the table. Oh my God, he didn't pull out my chair. My perfect guy, he pulls out the chair. My perfect guy opens doors. He offers me tea. He brings me things on our dates. That's what my perfect guy does. It wasn't even us going out on a date. It was me, my version of who I thought I should be that I wanted to share, and this perfect guy. Oh, this poor guy that I'm dating. He could never measure up. This poor guy that I'm married to. I brought my Disney husband with me. Greg, you didn't take out the trash. Disney husband, he woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning, made me breakfast. We ate a darling breakfast together. He took out the trash. I left for work. There was no measuring up. And what I did was I started listening. I put down the perfect husband. I took out of every conversation this need to show up a particular way. And it, it's been a slow, progressive process. But every, everywhere I could, I noticed, oh my gosh, I just compared him to whatever in a movie or to what, um, being a young doctor in Louisiana, working at a charity hospital system, Guys used to come and steal my keys and go fix up my car and bring it back. This poor guy had to hear those compare. They would go change my oil, you know, while I'm doing my rounds. Um, in India, people would leave. I had a hotel room full of flowers. This poor guy had to do, you know, measure up to that those events and those things showing up. You had visions of the perfect dad at 10 mm -hmm. and the perfect dad throughout time. And you sang that song and you took the perfect dad out away from the table and what happened? Uh, well, I would just say that also, you know, not only with my father, but with you, you know, there's, there's just like with him, you did the same thing, you know, just things would come along in life and I would be hurt by my father by you and so to be in that place which I'm, I'm grateful I'm at that place now where um, I, c I can you know immediately offer forgiveness and know that you know um, that that's re it's it's not something you're trying to do you're not trying to hurt me you're really just doing your best and unconsciousness comes up and ego comes up and the pain body comes up all those things and in that space of who you're not, things are said and things are done. And they're hurtful, yes, but ultimately I know it's really not you. Because I've spent enough time with you to know who you truly are. And so I, I, I want to look beyond or through that other stuff, the dysfunctional stuff or the egoic stuff or the pain body stuff, and keep my eyes focused on who you truly are. Because that's who I want to nurture and grow and connect with. And the other stuff, even though it's painful and it's the last thing I want and I wish it wouldn't happen, it's still there. And that's okay. And, um, and I'm just going to continue to acknowledge who I know you are and continue to um, be grateful for every moment that you show up as love, which is so many moments. This is what you make possible is acceptance. What Greg's talking about is he's accepting me just the way I am. And he is sharing with me unconditional love. And he's putting judgment aside and offering deep 
listening to whatever is coming up.